Hey everybody, Adam Savage at Prop Store in London with Stephen Lane and his insane collection of spacesuits. And now we are in the comedy era of spacesuits, <laughs> which is a very small niche of spacesuits, isn't it? Oh yeah, you know, you don't get many of these, do you? Let's face it. And I think if you're gonna have a pair of spacesuits from a comedy era, and, and I mean, to have both of them together, yeah. Austin and Minnie Me, of course, from Austin Powers, they're just exceptional, aren't they, as, as a double act. Can you tell me about how, how you obtain these? these? Well, I'm pretty certain that these actually sold out through to uh, through from Chris Gilman. I think Chris Gilman from Global Effects, okay. I think, yeah. uh, made these for the film. And I, I feel like that they gravitated back to him afterwards. Maybe they were mm -hmm. rental, made for hire. Sure. Um, and so they went out to one collector, maybe another collector. And at that time, I was really establishing my sp spacesuit collection, yeah. as you do. And so I was putting the call out, and um, and I think a, a friend collector of mine ended up with these, and I was like, come on, man, we've got to do a deal. Yeah. Let's just bring them home to prop stores so we can <laughs> we can add them to the collection, and and we did. But um, yeah, I mean, they're, they're, the, the style, the design of them, and, and just the fun with them as well. You know, we were just talking off camera about how it's got this sort of toggle switch on here. What does that do? What's the functionality? And of course, it's a gag in the film, isn't it? Where they're talking to each other. he has to, to talk within one position and here and another. another. Yeah. yeah, that's right. It's just, it's absolutely crazy. I love the fact that they basically did a one-to-one -one on the soft suits of the 2001 spacesuit. Yeah, that we've got it sitting in the background there, just a, a replica of the 2001. Yeah. I should say that's the only one replica spacesuit in the collection because <laughs> I can't get an original one at the moment. But yeah, I mean, it's it's essentially a, a, an homage to that, isn't it? Uh, but then at the same time, introducing the sort of bubble helmet that's more representative of what, the 60s style yeah, or something exactly. like that? exactly. You know, where we're, where we're looking at, I mean, it's almost, didn't the, the sort of the cosmonauts start with a sort of bubble style helmet or something? similar to this anyway in shape and style but yeah I mean it's definitely it's sort of kicking back a few years isn't it for, for that sort of design certainly um, it, it does it, it looks like Vernon Troyer's spacesuit has a bigger helmet than than Austin Powers <laughs> well there's a debate to have isn't there <laughs> yeah um, this is also another unique thing in your collection, uh, a, a tiny spacesuit. It's a tiny spacesuit, isn't it? And they, they've really gone to great, great pains there to emulate exactly what Austin's wearing. I mean, all the way down to these so cute, these little Wellington boots. The perfect that <laughs> copies of the bigger ones. <laughs> I know. And they're, and they're just literally, you know, garden boots, aren't they? Water, waterproof boots. Um, that uh, have been been sprayed silver. So even though there's a huge amount of effort that's gone into elements of the construction and design of this to emulate the 2001 yeah. suit, they just put a pair of Wellingtons on the bottom for the comedic element of it, haven't they, really? As much I, as anything else. I love else. that. Um, I, I notice a thing that happens with some of the pieces in my collection, which is the vinyl, the vinyl, shiny vinyl on fabric tends to not be very archival. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, no, that's that's definitely a real problem actually for us. And and you know the the, the component parts and the construction and the way these are made. And we've talked about this a lot previously. How you know for for a film studio and for a production department, they're only worried about making sure that it lasts yeah. for the shot. Get the shot in the can, and that's as good as it needs to be. But the problem with this particular material is that it is laminated prior to it being made. So, but before the suit's made, you know, that's not something that's applied subsequently. And once it starts to delaminate, there is nothing that you can do no. to stop it. I mean, we had- And it's not even about UV exposure it's in not, my it's, experience. No, no, it's not. I mean, because you basically have sort of almost like a rubberized film that's sitting on top of cloth, there's there's such a lack of adhesion there really over a period of time. And also the the the, the, the finish sort of, I suppose, will start to dry and, and lose some of that movement and dexterity that it has. And so whenever you're moving this thing around, you know, it sheds a little bit like a Christmas tree. You have to be super, super careful with it. And I've gone to textile conservation re restoration specialists and experts in this field and costume designers and wardrobe supervisors. And I said, you know, what can I do? We actually had one of the, f the, the, the first times that we really noticed or had the biggest problem with this was we had Trinity's suit from the Matrix. Oh, Remember yeah. the, 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 the oh, my God. black Latex. PVC right. suit? Yeah. And literally that thing just delaminated in front of us after we'd picked wow. it up from Warner Brothers. And so I was going around, everybody's saying, how do I relaminate it? And you can't, you just can't take no. that step back. So what we've actually done here is we've cheated a little bit and it's actually probably more evident in the, in the mini me. Yeah. So if you look at actually inside the neck ring here, yeah. you know, aesthetically, when you look at that, that's, that sort of appears and presents pretty close to what you see on the main suits mm -hmm. itself. But that is actually a rubber, rubberized uh, silver paint that we've used there. Oh, wow. So we've had to look at it and say, okay, we know that we can't, take it back to what it was originally. Yeah. 
but we want the aesthetic to present. And actually, there's been a, the various degrees of touch up. I mean, this is this is delaminated, and yeah. and we we've come into this and and just touched it up and Looks refinished really it, good. and it works okay, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Um, I, I as I uh, the first two Mercury suits I made replicas of have just fallen to pieces oh. in that same way. And in fact, actually, the, the replica you have, uh, the 2001 suit, is using a, a, a much closer, it's got a much thinner coating. And I've looked for shiny fabrics like that because I'm assuming that uh, with the thinner coating, you may get better adhesion, and I'm just sort of hoping. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> no, we, we all live in hope. Every time a new spacesuit comes in, I look at it and go, okay, what's gonna be the first thing that could possibly yeah. break down on this, and what can we do to mitigate that? And more often than not, you can do nothing other than watch it happen, you know, and then, as I say, some sympathetic restoration, try to stabilize it. And we've tried all sorts of things over the years, you know, coatings and varnishes and, you know, sprays and gels and, yeah. and there's just nothing, you know, you just, you have to let it, let, let it happen. It is, it is the particular, uh, it's within collecting in general. And I mean, I come from a, 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 my father was a fine artist. So archival aspects of the world are really important to me in the way I store things and the way I build them. But film is just not concerned with archival nests, like you said, it's about getting the shot on the day. Uh, and so being able to keep these pieces extant over time is really complicated. It is, and, and you know, there's, there's, there's different schools of thought, trains of thought on that as well. You know, I've spoken to archivists who work for some of the big studios archives, you know, and some of them will take the position, well, you know, this is the journey that that artifact is on, and we will record it as it happens, sure. but actually we're not going to do anything to stop it happening. Um, and then you talk to another archivist and you say, no, no, absolutely not. We're going to, you know, keep redressing that foam latex. Tom has done a lot of work for Lucasfilm, hasn't mm -hmm. he, over the years, where he's gone in and stabilized some of the masks and prosthetics and things like that. I'm certainly of that camp. You know, I think yeah. catch it before it's gone, you know, maintain the aesthetic, maintain as much of the original structure and form as you possibly can, um, but just be mindful of what it is that you're doing. There's an aspect of these I wanted to talk about. Uh, a couple of years ago, I had dinner with a famous comedy director and they were talking to a, a director who didn't direct comedies. And they were talking with each other about setting up shots and making beautiful shots. And the comedy director said, yeah, I'm, never, I'm not that worried about the shots. It's always about the joke. And there's a fundamental difference between comedy and other types of film. And he's like, if I'm worrying about the shot and you're thinking about the shot, you're not getting the joke. And the joke is the important thing. Yeah. And the simplicity of these two suits really speaks to that in this collection where complexity is all part of the narrative storytelling. Yeah. Mm -mm. Yeah. One speaker, three <laughs> buttons, and you've sold the joke. Yeah, O2, P2, I'm not too sure what's going on there. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's, it's right on line with that, isn't it? You're absolutely right. And that's where this is just such a genius piece of design, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, if you had, if you had all these buttons and stuff all over this, you, yeah, it's not the simple line right to the punchline, yeah. as it were. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I, I love that you have these together. Uh, these should never be separated. They separate. should never be separated. Ever, yeah, no, ever, no, ever. No, and they're, like, they've always got to stay together. In fact, at one point, I actually had them on one base together, so they couldn't go anywhere else other than with each other, but it just it was too big for us to sort of wrangle things around, so I, they're separate now. I have one suggestion, which is that you get a digital recording of Mini-Me's voice in here and that he and Austin can talk back and forth. <laughs> With a flick. Yeah, exactly. You turn <laughs> this and you go, hello. That's, that's just my one pitch. You've got to add to it, man. Stephen, yeah. what an, a, a wonderful, wonderful pair. I find myself, I, I, one of the spacesuits I hope to replicate soon includes a helmet like this. I won't say any more than that. But, but that's a difficult piece of construction, isn't it? I mean, I, to actually achieve that bubble like that, isn't that tough to do? I don't, I think these are off the shelf items. Ah, that okay. is my feeling is that they're right. display items because I couldn't imagine, well, Actually, no, this could have been heat, it, right, it was heated and blown. Right, 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 right So, because right. I okay. can see that it was grabbed around here. Um, but it started as very thick material. I mean, probably quarter inch, you know, six millimeters thick. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that looks like a tough proposition to me. Somebody comes to you and says they want to do that and yeah. have it uh, have it ready for film and for shooting and look good on that. It's well, just like... Like those big expanses of glass on Robbie the robot or the B9 robot, right? These, yeah. are, these are nightmares. And yeah. actually, frankly, they're in pristine condition. Uh, I, you know, like a lot of my visors have scratches, scratches and dust and on them, them and stuff. Yeah, yeah, no, you're right. And maybe that's why they're slightly different size because if, I mean, if they're blown in that manner, you know, if they're not sort of formed in the same way, like out of a, a vac form, for yeah, example, yeah. it's going to maybe give a slightly different uh, finish and, and appearance to them. But uh, yeah, I love them as a pair and they're going to stay as a pair. That's great. Thank you, sir.
Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to support us even further, you can by becoming a tested member. Uh, details are, of course, below, but it includes all sorts of perks and we're building them all the time. You get advanced word and behind the scenes photos of some of our projects. Questions, you get to ask direct questions during my live streams, and we have some members-only videos, including the Adam real-time series of unbroken, unedited shots of me working here in the shop. They are weirdly meditative. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you on the next one.